you're fine. <clears throat> okay, cool. So uh, we're gonna jump over this, uh, go over this buyer's cold calling script. This is something that over the years we have perfected. And I wanted to get, and let me share my screen here, wanted to do a recording of this. So we've, we've got this for the future. So uh, this is our, our buyer's cold calling script. And uh, hopefully you can, you can see this well, but uh, it's, it's very short and sweet. It should only be about five minutes. This is going to eliminate uh, conversations going in, you know, in directions they shouldn't go or just dragging on too long. We want to make sure that we're short to the point, but also still listening to our uh, potential clients, but we want to make sure that it's about five minutes. So be enthusiastic, but mirror their tone. Don't sound over salesy or pushy. We definitely don't want uh, to come off as salespeople, right? We're not selling something. We don't have a product to sell. We providing, we're providing a service. We just want to make sure that they've got the correct information that they reached out about, right? Well, we want to provide value to them. Uh, again, stay under five minutes. So there's a couple of things here. Uh, I've got it in blue. These are the big ticket items that we're trying to get the answers for. And if we don't get those answers, we need to ask more questions. So the first one's location. We obviously want to know where they're planning on moving to. Uh, the price point, uh, we need to see how they came up with that price point. If they're working with an agent and what kind of finance they plan on using to purchase the home, or if they're planning on using cash, and then obviously their search criteria. We're looking for their search criteria. We need to understand exactly what they're looking for. That way it will eliminate the amount of showings that we've got because we're more in tune with what they're looking for. So uh, on the bottom here, I'm just gonna go ahead and cover this. Remember to find the motivation of the buyer. Everyone moves for a reason. Uh, if we have the motivation and we can constantly remind them of that motivation, uh, it will ensure that we don't get ghosted and it will also uh, kind of help speed the thing, uh, speed the process along, right? If you've got a buyer that's just taking their sweet time, you can say, hey, look, you know, school's starting back up in August or, you know, the holidays are coming up. I know you wanted to be moved in by the holidays, your rent's up, uh, whatever the case may be, you got a baby on the way, you're about to get married. Again, everyone moves for some sort of motivation. So, when I call, you know, we're just going to kind of go into this uh, briefly and we'll do some objections and uh, some, some other videos and, and do some role playing uh, throughout the week as well. So uh, through in location, we're going to call. We're going to give ourselves, obviously, introduce ourselves. Uh, don't say, hey, I'm a, I'm a real estate agent. You know, just be very, very kind of nonchalant. Hey, this is Jay Spolin with the Bolin Group. Uh, just again, make this your own. You don't have to do exactly word for word. But hey, you just reached out, um, you know, maybe through one of our Facebook ads or however they reached out. You reached out through ZBuyer or ZBuyer's through Facebook, but you reached out through Zillow. You reached out through whatever lead source you got it from. Maybe it's a, a post on uh, a local classified page or whatever it is. Hey, you reached out on there, uh, maybe in particular about a, a property. You reached out about 1234 Main Street. Just wanted to see what all questions you have, right? We're, we're just trying to provide them value. Now, the, the first and foremost thing is they're probably going to ask you a specific question. Now, that specific make that question may be, hey, is it zoned to this school district? Uh, what's the lot square footage size? What are the HOA rules? Uh, you name it, they may ask you for a question or they may just straight up say, when can I see it? So what we want to do is, is we want to try to kind of postpone that question. And, and again, if they ask for, uh, the, you know, just to see it, then say, Hey, yeah, not a problem at all. Let me pull my calendar up. Let me, uh, see what availability I have while I'm doing that. You go into the script, right? Hey, what's the, what's the, uh, tax rate on that, that particular property on one, two, three, four main street. Yeah. Not a problem. While I'm pulling that up, is this the location you're looking to purchase in? I see that it's located in, you know, the Conroe area. Is that the location you're looking to purchase in? What other areas are, are you looking in? Uh, Conroe is the only one. Okay, so maybe Willis or the Woodlands or, you know, Splendora or something like that. It, would, would any of that work for you? Oh, yeah, that might work. Or maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's only for the ISD, right? We're trying to, trying to get exactly where they're looking honed in, but we also want to uh, broaden the, the parameter because maybe there is only one or two homes within that location. That would meet their criteria. So we're trying to make sure there may be another area that's close, you know, to where they're looking, but that we can include in their search. 
So again, down here or down here, we've got yes or no's. There's pretty much answers to all of those. If they say yes, what do you like about the area? More than likely, they're going to say, hey, I work in Conroe. Uh, I work in the woodlands. You know, our, our, we grew up here. My kids go to school here. My family's here. We just love the area, whatever it may be. Take notes of that, right? We're taking notes on everything they're saying. We're letting them talk, telling us why they like the area. We're going to try to get them as close to those amenities or close to their family or whatever they want uh, in our criteria when we punch it into our search. If they say no, you know, well, what other areas have you been looking for? Hey, you're looking in Conroe? No, I'm not. I'm actually looking over in Cyprus. Oh, not a problem. What other areas are you looking for? You know, nope, just Cyprus. Okay. So again, when we do our, our search, we're going to put it out a little further than Cyprus because again, we may have limited inventory for the Cyprus area. So we're just going to jump right into price. Hey, that, that home you reached out on 1234 Main Street, it's priced at 350. Is that the price point you're looking to purchase them? No, that's not, that's not the price point. Okay, we've got here. What price range are you comfortable with? Whatever their answer is, how did you come up with that? Right, we're asking them how they came up with the price that they have in mind. Yes, fantastic. Just curious, how did you get to that price range? You know, how, have you spoken with the lender? We're kind of touching base on the finance, even though finance isn't until down here, we're just kind of touching base on it. Try to keep all of this in order because it, it keeps everything organized. It keeps the conversation flowing in the right direction. But uh, this way, you know, we're, we're in control as well. So, you know, feed off of however they've gone, that, you know, whatever answer they've given. Uh, but we do want to ask if they currently own or rent a home, right? Because of course, we'd love to sell their property as well. So we, we've got to make sure that, you know, there's no hidden hidden agenda here where they've actually, they've got to sell a property in order to purchase one. Well, as we know in our market right now, contingencies are really, really tough to get accepted, right? Unless you're off the bat, the home's been on the market for a while, et cetera. So we want to make sure that we're on that. Now, if they do say, yes, they have a home for sale, we're going to make sure that we go over that, but we're going to talk about that afterwards, right? Hey, I understand. We'd love to help you out with that too. Uh, but, you know, let's, let's concentrate on finding you a place first. Because we don't want to, you know, we don't want to jumble too many things up. We want to get them going on the purchase and then the, the listing will come along with that. So uh, if they've got a home to own, uh, will you need to sell it before you buy a new one? Uh, is it currently listed? If it's not, go into how you can help them sell and purchase at the same time, but set a listing appointment for another date and meet them at the home, right? We want to get into their home. We want to show face. Clearly, we're, we're going we're gonna to meet them prior but we want to get in there. We want to be able to see that home in person uh, so we can definitely compare it to other, other sold properties. Uh, now on the uh, lease, we just need to find out when the lease is up, right? If the lease is up within four months, you know, we're, we're in, uh, in business. If the lease is not up for another 10 months, then you may need to let them know we're going to have to wait a little while uh, in, order to, uh, in order to purchase because pre-approval typically lasts about four months. So we want to be within that four months, not to mention, uh, not to mention if it's, you know, two weeks to find a property, 30 days to close on it. So you're talking six weeks, maybe two months if they're, if they're slow moving feet, but um, you know, that's, that's two more additional months that we've got for absolutely nothing. Well, once they close on the home, we know that they're going to skip a month of payment, right? So it's September now, if they closed in September, they wouldn't pay October. Their first payment would be due in November. So there may only be one month where they would have to pay double. Depending on how they have their lease set up, they may not have to pay double. So usually I say about four months is when we need to get started on looking for property. So if they're 10 months out, then we're going to obviously put them into our CRM. Uh, we use Chime and we're going to put them in and we're going to set ourselves notifications, maybe put them on a smart plan. That way you don't have to constantly keep setting yourself reminders and tasks to reach out to them. We've got a smart plan that automatically does that. So uh, we are going to want to call them though, once it gets, you know, six months in, uh, def definitely once you get to that four months, but you've already been reaching out to them. That way you can ensure that you've got that business. We can still provide them with the buyer's guide. We can still provide them with our, uh, our preferred lenders. Okay. But uh, yeah. So what does the time frame look like to move into their home? Have you seen any homes in person? Have you been in any homes? No, nope, just getting the process started. Perfect. That's what we want, right? If they've been into any homes, then this is where the next section goes. How did, how did you get into those homes, right? So we've got the agent. This is the line that we use all the time. I assume you reached out to me directly because you're not currently working with an agent. 
Is that correct? And they'll say yes or no. Based off of that, we can then go into, or we can then continue the script or not continue the script. Now, if they say they're working with an agent, we need to ask a little more questions, right? If they say they're, they're they, um, if they've not, they're not working with an agent, yes to not working with an agent, then you say, perfect, I look forward to earning your business. We do want them to understand that we are here to serve them, right? We're here to help them match make uh, that perfect home, dream home, whatever you want to call it, but we're here to help them find their next, their next home. So uh, no, if they say no, they're, um, they are currently working with somebody, then we need to ask the questions. Are you calling signs? Are you calling the listing agent? How have you been able to get access to these properties? Is this someone that you know? Is it someone that you have a, a contractual agreement with, right? Just because they say they're working with an agent doesn't necessarily mean that we're, you know, out of the, you know, out of the, uh, the possibility to earn their business because I've had it multiple times where they're saying, yeah, I'm working with an agent. And you're like, oh, okay. And you keep asking some more questions and they're like, yeah, but they haven't actually sent me properties or ever shown me homes and, and we've never met in person. Oh, okay. Well, that's, you know, understandable. If you want to work with them, that's great. But what if I, what if I were able to find you the home that you're looking for? Would you, would you purchase with me? Would I have the chance to earn your business? If that answer is yes, then you need to continue to uh, push to try to, to earn their business, to, to show them that you're the agent for them. So um, listing agent, if they've called the listing agent, uh, we're going to explain that the listing agent has a written agreement with the seller uh, that they have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that it's uh, the seller's best interest, right? So there's a, a somewhat of a rebuttal here that says uh, that they represent the seller. This means they will try to get the most money for the client. Uh, you need a buyer's agent. And I always say that's like a bulldog, right? Somebody who's going to fight for your money, fight for you uh, to represent you and uh, negotiate the sales price repairs and look after your best interest. That makes sense, right? We're asking them a question that clearly it makes sense. We just want them to say yes, right? Uh, other agent agreement, have you signed an agreement with an agent? Are they a full-time real estate agent? Do they live or do business in the area? Uh, I'm a full-time real estate agent with many years of experience. Uh, again, where buyers should be represented by one exclusive agent, not multiple agents. If they do have multiple agents, uh, again, bulldog as far as negotiations. Uh, and then we're trying to set the appointment. What's a good time to meet? And I can show you how the buying process works, right? If they're not willing to meet, maybe provide them with uh, preferred lenders and the buyer's guide and provide value that maybe one of the other agents hasn't provided. Because sometimes, you know, and I'll just use an example. I know when I bought a truck, uh, recently bought a truck, I just had every single salesperson, I think within the next five to 10 mile radius, looking for uh, a Ford F-150, right? That was four wheel drive. That's what I wanted. And so I had probably about five or six people looking for trucks for me and calling me. And whoever found me the best deal, I went with, right? Well, that's not really necessarily the same thing with real estate. The reason being is when, when uh, salespeople on, on vehicles are looking for cars, they have their own individual avenues they go to. Well, with real estate agents, we've all got the same MLS, right? Unless you've got some sort of off-market uh, home that you've got pocket listing or something like that, we've all got the same MLS, right? So we can all see the same homes based on their search criteria. But not all real estate agents are created equal, right? So we've got uh, some that don't don't work as diligently as we do or negotiate as hard as we do, do. We do. So we need to show that in order to earn business. So if it's multiple agents, again, buyers should communicate with only one agent instead. Uh, all 40,000 in our market, Houston agents have access to the same properties. Uh, we're just trying to prove to them that we will be the best fit when it comes to negotiating and the best fit when it comes to uh, doing repairs and having their best interest. So again, trying to set the appointment, what's a good time to meet? And so I can show you uh, why I am the best fit for you. Uh, finance, this is a huge, uh, usually point that will either throw red flags or slow the buyer script down because a lot of times people don't like talking about finance. It's a touchy subject. They don't wanna give their information. And, and I understand that, right? I don't want to know all their information. I don't need to know how much money they make. You know, some agents like to ask for credit scores. I really don't need to know that. You know, if they give me any indication that there may be a credit issue, then I'll talk about, hey, my lender needs a 580 credit score, or depending on what type of loan they're looking at, you know, you need a 620 credit score, whatever the case may be, 
but you got to ask more questions. So we're obviously just straight up asking them how they plan on purchasing the home. Is it a cash? Is it cash or is it a mortgage, right? So if it's cash, super easy. Cash deals are great. You can typically typically close them in about 14 days. Uh, gives us a lot of negotiating power, tends to close a lot quicker. Sellers will need some sort of proof, right? So if you've got an investor, you've got somebody that's looking to purchase cash, we need a bank statement, at least a bank statement. It can be black, uh, blacked out or it can, it can be, you know, however you want to do it, but we've got to have something that shows the amount of money that can cover the home that they're looking to purchase, right? If they're, if they're doing a cash out refinance, then we need, you know, the information and the process that got started, their address. We just need all the details possible in order to help them out because you definitely don't want to get bamboozled when you're trying to help them purchase and find out, oh, there's more, more to the story. You know, now I'm, I'm, I'm wasting time. So, you know, just figure out what they need. Um, bank statements is a great way to do it. We need to do that in order to send the offer. If you've got an investor that absolutely knows their stuff, they will tell you, hey, I don't need uh, my cash uh, statement, bank statement. I don't need a pre-approval letter in order to submit an offer. And that is 100% correct. Uh, but you just tell them, well, what do you want me to tell them when they do ask for that information? Because they will ask for that information every single time. So um, that's just something to, to kind of go that direction. But um, have you been pre-approved if they are going with a mortgage? Yes, they've been pre-approved. Not a problem at all. We definitely are going to need that pre-approval for our file, right? Because in order to submit the offer, we're going to need that pre-approval. And we always want to try to get them with our lender. So if we want to get them with our lender, you can, you can always say things like, you know, hey, uh, I've got some preferred lenders that could possibly save you some money, maybe $75 to $100 a month. Uh, would you be open to talking with them? More than likely, they're going to say yes. Or they're going to ask you, well, what if I talk with multiple lenders? Isn't that going to screw my credit up? Not necessarily. Here's the reason why. You can shop around as long as there's a short amount of time in order to get the best deal for origination fees and for uh, interest rates. But, um, you know, we want to try to get them with our preferred lender because we have built a relationship with them, at least one of our lenders, right? Because we've built relationships with these people. They've got a, a track record of being able to close on time, being able to have good rates. And, and again, we, we're obviously referring them out. So we've, we've built a report with them. So if they're adamant about using their uh, lender, that is completely fine. I ask for the pre-approval letter. I then personally contact the lender and let them know, hey, I'm John Doe's a real estate agent. I just wanted to give you my information. Here's an email with all my contact information. I've got a transaction coordinator, whatever you've got, include everything. That way you're building that report with that lender. Because the last thing you want is have a closing on a you know, on a weekend or something and, and the lenders nowhere to be found a couple of days before, right? Well, those people aren't moving in on that weekend. They're going to be, you know, they're going to be moving in the next week if they move in at all. So we've got to have good communication with our lender and obviously our preferred lenders we've got good communication with. So it uh, wouldn't hurt to shop around. So we want to get them with our lender if we can. Uh, no, if they haven't been, we want to explain why getting pre-approved is the first step in the home uh, home buying process. So we're going to tell them, hey, it gives us uh, two things. One, it gives us the actual pre-approval letter. And, and during the pandemic, during COVID, there's been a lot of sellers who have not allowed uh, buyers into the home without providing a pre-approval letter. But even besides that, we need that pre-approval letter in order to make, uh, in order to make a, uh, an offer, right? And so a lot of times it takes 24 to 48 hours, depending on the buyer to get that information in for that, that credit application, right? Or that loan application. So it's going to take 24 to 48 hours in order to get pre-approved. With our market right now, 24 to 48 hours may be too long. That home may be gone. There's already another buyer that may be pre-approved ready to go. So, you know, if we send an offer over without a pre-approval letter, they're going to ask again where it's at. So the second thing is, is the, the lender is going to in, incorporate everything into their mortgage, the principal, interest, taxes, and insurance to get them a monthly budget, to, to um, get them a monthly figure. So a lot of people go, yeah, I can afford a $350,000 home or maybe a $700,000 home, but maybe they don't really know what that price means unless it's broken down into monthly increments, right? Not to mention taxes and insurance can play a big role on that depending on where the home's located. 
So we just want to make sure that uh, they understand that we need the letter uh, in order to make an offer and that they're going to give them their purchasing power, what they can purchase. Because maybe a $300,000 home in one area that they've been looking at with super high tax rates may be you know, a $200,000 home and a lower tax rate. So, you know, again, um, just, just let them know that we need, that's the first step, very first step in the home buying process. Gives us the letter. They're going to give you your purchasing power in order to make the offer. Uh, again, we have a rockstar lender that can explain the loan process more in detail. Can I have them reach out to you after we get off the phone or what time works best? They're going to give you an answer to that. You know, hopefully it works. If they're, if they're adamant about giving you any information or they're trying to, uh, you know, slow things down with not answering questions, just ask more questions, right? Now, I'm, I'm confident I can get pre-approved. I don't need to get pre-approved. I'm ready to go see houses. Okay, not a problem. What if I told you you might be able to get pre-approved for more than what you're looking for? Wouldn't you want to talk to them? The rates are changing every day. Why don't we go ahead and get you locked in on that interest rate? I mean, there's multiple ways you can combat that, but we need to get them with a lender. I personally do not like showing uh, unqualified or unpre-approved buyers unless I have a strong feeling that they are going to purchase. They've got another home. I've built a report with them already, something along those lines. If it's a cold, true cold calling uh, per, uh, potential buyer, I am not going to go show them a property unless I can get them pre-approved. Now I will meet them you know, at a Starbucks or meet them for lunch or something like that, uh, usually for coffee or at the office. But uh, that is only in order to build a better rapport. And again, reiterate the financing part, because that's what I'm going to do when I meet them. So getting in with our lender is huge. I always say, what if they could save you 75 to $100 a month? Wouldn't you be interested in that? Nobody on, on the planet, as far as I'm aware, is going to say, no, I'm not interested, unless they've got you know, a family member that's a lender or somebody they've done a deal with in the past, you know, then of course, we're not going to push too much. We'll, we'll keep whatever lender you want to use, especially if they're pre-qualified and, and just build the report with that lender. So criteria, pretty straightforward. Uh, I always tell them, uh, straightforward, I always tell them that, you know, I'm going to send them some information uh, on the home that they're interested in. This is usually where I answer their question. Yeah, it's, you know, the, the property that you're looking at has got a 2.8% tax rate. Yes, it's zoned to uh, whatever school. If they keep beating me up on it throughout the call, uh, I may give them the answer before. But if it's something that's not what they want, especially at the very beginning, if you're like, oh, it's zoned to, you know, I don't know, Houston ISD instead of Connor ISD, they may say, okay, I'm not interested in that. Thanks. And then they might be calling the next real estate agent, right? So we don't want that to happen. We don't want them to hang up on us. So we want to keep them on the hook for a little bit, answer that question wherever you can, but just if it's not something they want, let them know, hey, I understand it's not in the right ISD, but there's, you know, and, and hopefully you got it pulled up, but within Connor ISD, there's, you know, 180 homes that are available right now that fit, fit your criteria. Now we don't really know their criteria because we haven't gotten to it yet, but there's 180 homes that are available um, that may fit your criteria. So uh, know this house is blank amount of bedrooms, bathrooms. We want to use that somewhat as an example. Um, is there anything else they're looking for in a new home? Yeah, I want open floor concept. I want big backyard. I, I have to have a three car garage. Um, it's got to be in an HOA. I, I, it can't be in an HOA. Just figure out what they want. Um, and then I always say, based off this conversation, I'd like to meet as soon as possible so you can get a name to the face and um, you know go over the home buying process more in detail. And so I always tell them that I'm going to send them about three to five, four to five homes to their email to take a look, look at. Most of the time, it's more than that, 10 plus homes, but have them pick out three to five homes to go look at. Now, I always say it's best, especially on the cold calling, to go meet them in person somewhere first, and you can physically show them the properties on your laptop or print offs or however you want to do it. It's best to meet them at a location first than wasting four hours of your day going to show a bunch of properties when you guys may not be a good fit. So it's up to you on how you want to do it, or you can go meet them at the first property and go show them homes and try to build that report. But we're trying to build the report with them and we're trying to get it to where we can get that buyer's rep signed. Because the last thing you want to do is go waste four hours of your day and, you know, for them just to their, you know, just to have their agent be out of town 
and they're never, never had any intentions on signing a, a buyer's rep with you. So if you can meet them for coffee or meet them something far, somewhere prior, it's always best. But worst case scenario, you meet them at the home and you show them the homes they're interested in. Again, get that pre-qualification letter first. So you're going to summarize everything, right? The location, the price, the uh, if they're working with an agent, if they're not, clearly if you made it down this far, they're more than likely not working with an agent. So you're going to say, hey, definitely looking forward to earning your business. Uh, you know, finance, you're looking to uh, do a home uh, home loan. We've got you with, you know, our preferred lender A, B, and C. We're going to get you hooked up with them uh, and then go over their criteria. So what I do after that is uh, I do ask what time they're available, right? When do you want to go see some properties? When, when are you ready to get started? If they're within the next, you know, three months and they're like, we're ready to go see homes this weekend. Not a problem. What day and time works best for you? So find out that day and time, hold them accountable to that, right? There's a couple of things you can do. One thing I've been doing is, is I've been sending them uh, a Google uh, Google calendar invite, right? I get their email and, and obviously we've got their email because we're going to send them the criteria <coughs> for the homes, right? The homes that they're looking for, the available homes. So we're going to get their email, go ahead and send them a calendar invite, right? Uh, meeting with John Doe, home showing it with John Doe at noon on Saturday, right? So we've got that plugged in, add them to that, right? So they've got that in their calendar. So now you're reminding them, hey, you said we're going to meet. Here's the actual invitation. We're, we're doing this, right? So in the meantime, once you hang up with the phone, hey, great talking to you. Look forward to, to seeing you in person on Saturday. We're going to see some awesome homes. However you want to wrap the call up, but short, sweet, get it over with. Then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, get them in a group text, right? So we've got to send them our lender list but maybe then send them a group text with one of your preferred lenders and say, hey, preferred lender A or B or C or whichever one, this is John Doe. He's looking to go check out some homes on Saturday. He's open to, you know, or he's looking to get pre-approved. Uh, you know, he's willing, he's open to talking to you. So you guys set up a day and time. I just want to introduce you guys. So not only do they have the Google calendar invite, but then they've also got a group text with the lender. Once the lender says, Hey, John, you know, nice to meet you. You know, you're in great hands with this agent. Uh, what time is great to get on the phone, right? And they'll say, you know, tomorrow, Thursday at, you know, noon or whatever time. You need to remember that date, right? Maybe punch in your calendar or whatever that uh, lender A is talking to John Doe at uh, Thursday at 12. I then follow up, right? 30 minutes to an hour afterwards with, afterward with the lender. And I say, hey, how'd the conversation go with John? And if they say, yeah, I couldn't get a hold of them or, you know, the conversation went great. He's going to go ahead and submit the app. I continuously follow up with them. Right. So that person, John, I go and, and I kind of play dumb. Right. I then reach out to the to John and say, hey, how the conversation go with the lender? I've already built a report with the lender. The lender's already told me how the conversation went. If they didn't talk to him, then I may say, hey, John, sounds like you guys maybe missed the opportunity. You know, the uh, conversation you guys had set up, what's a better time to, to talk about that? I'm doing the follow-up. A lender is only going to follow up a couple of times with that, uh, with that potential buyer. It's our responsibility to make sure that we're following up with them. So if we can stay on them, the idea is to get them with the lender, get them pre-approved before Saturday at noon. If we can't, right, it is your decision based off of the conversation, because once you do this multiple times, you're going to get better at uh, defining if that's a, a, a good fit, you know, a good buyer, so forth, or if it's may, maybe a waste of time. So you can then figure out, again, use the motivation. Hey, John, I know school's coming up, or hey, I know the holidays are coming up. You want to be moved in by then. We're going to look at home Saturday, either A, I'll meet you at the homes, but we still, you know, while we're at the homes, we're going to talk about, hey, you need to speak with this lender. We, we, we talked about that. You know, he's going to save you some money. You need to need to get with him and, and talk with them. And, may, and I always say that they're more like a financial advisor, right? They're going to help you uh, in your decision because we want whatever is best for the client. If their lender or another lender is a better fit for them, then they need to go with them. That's common sense. But if they don't have a lender, then we need them to go with, with ours, not something they saw in a commercial, right? So, uh, and B, I would say that you need to remind them and say, hey, look, John, I'd love to show you some properties but the first step in the home buying process is getting pre-approved. You know, I'd hate to go look at these homes, us uh, so wait 24 to 48 hours to get pre-approved 
and let home be gone. This market is very aggressive. I don't want that to happen. I've seen it time and time again. So play it how you want. I personally will go show homes the first time without a, without a buyer's rep because I, want, I don't want to throw that in their face. I don't want to you know, spit a bunch of legal you know, jargon and documents at them before really building a report with them. I want to get in there. I want to talk about you know, what they do for a living. I want to see what their hobbies are. I want to learn a little more about them and, and reciprocate that and, and tell them a little bit more about myself. And then once we've really got a relationship and built that relationship up, the next time we go show, I'm going to say, hey, John, uh, I'd love to go show you properties. This is some uh, paperwork that my broker requires me to get in order to you know, continue showing, continue working for you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and send it over to your email. Just let me know when you get it signed. If you have any questions about it, feel free to reach out. Just make it nonchalant, right? But getting that buyer's rep is huge. So this is the buyer's script. I, I, I think it's really great. It covers pretty much everything. If there's something that they are giving you pushback on, just always ask more questions. Always ask more questions. So we'll go over uh, some of the rebuttals here. Um, another video, but I just wanted to record this and got it. So reach out if you've got any questions about it.